Hey guys, <laughs> so sorry about that. I was running a little bit late, um, waiting for, first of all, traffic, and I was also picking up last minute Christmas gifts, so sorry about that. Um, thought I would make it on time, but of course I forgot how bad traffic is in LA, which should be obvious. So thank you guys for sticking around, and um, hopefully you can see and hear me every okay. Um, good to see you guys hanging out, though. I was, I was scrolling through the chat really quickly before I started just to, just to catch up with what you guys were chatting about. Um, so what the new Heaven Hill bottle of bond. Yes, I have Brandon's bottle of that. Um, I am bringing that to him on Saturday. Hey, Doug, what's up? What's up, everybody? Um, like I said, sorry for the delay. I was going to put chapstick on, but no, that messes with the taste of things. So no chapstick. Oh, I also forgot my water bottle. It's okay. It's okay. We don't need water. If I need water, I may just take a quick break and go grab it. Sorry, that's what I get for trying to rush. But hope you guys are having a wonderful night. Um, I'm really excited about this episode because it's something that I've kind of been building up to. Um, a lot of these tonight that I'll feature have been featured before, obviously. But these are what I consider my best bottles of 2019. Now, obviously, not everything that was released this year is in my collection. I haven't even tried everything that was re released this year, obviously. So this is just my favorite bottles that I've gotten this year. And I'm pretty sure I, you guys might have to spot check me on a couple of them, but I'm pretty sure these all actually came out in 2019. It was like a first edition. Now, um... Of course, I'm not featuring this year's Booker's releases or Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Those are consistently good. Those are always going to be my favorites. But I'm talking about new products, something that it, it is either a revival of another brand that they you know had before and they kind of discontinued it and brought it back. Wink, wink. We were talking about it. Um, or it's a completely new product. So, um, ah. Hold on one second. I'll be right back here, guys. I just want to make sure, Brandon, you reminded me, I had I had that sample bottle set out. I'm going to grab my water, and I'm going to grab my um, Weller Foolproof. So sorry. Be right back. I'm back. <laughs> yeah, um, Brandon, you reminded me. I'm so sorry. I'm here. I'm here. Hey, what's up? No, Brandon, I had that sample bottle because I don't have a full bottle of it. I had it set out um, as a reminder, and I just grabbed all my full bottles instead of that one. So, yeah, spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> um, Weller Foolproof is in the lineup. So thank you for that, Brandon, and I also got my water. So we're all set to continue, and let's start over. I'm just kidding. If I was recording a video, I would totally start over, but... Um, you're talking about spending? Oh, God. Uh, I, should, I should have some background music. I have spent so much freaking money since the beginning of November on whiskey. It is ridiculous. And I regret not pacing myself throughout the year because leading up to November, I had just been buying all year, you know, you know, a few bottles every month. But then stuff started coming out in October and I couldn't not buy them. And yeah, and I... Like, you're talking about uh, Buffalo Trace Antique Collection. Um, some of you guys know, but I managed to get two bottles of Thomas H. Handy. So I paid 160 for each of those. So I, I, yeah, I, I, my wallet, it hurts really bad. But I'm trying to control myself. I made my last trip yesterday, I think, to the liquor store to pick up my orders, hopefully for the end of the year. Um, they did get, um, they have the new bookers as they're coming soon. So I may, may break my little rule and get that. But yeah, it's, it's, it is, it's FOMO. Like I don't, I know so, so many of these things come and go and you may never get a chance to get them again. So I wanted to make sure I got them. So, and plus I do these videos for you guys. So that's just an excuse I tell myself, honestly. So let me get something in my glass. First of all, so I'll ask you guys later. Um, only two weeks until the new year. I know, but I still might more, buy more bottles. <laughs> you know me. Um, yes. So <laughs> Steven regrets nothing. Um, Brandon, you hope to try. Brandon, you haven't had anything from Buffalo Chase Antique Collection. I'm sure someone will bring one of their um, bottles on Saturday. So 
Uh, th I'm sure. Yeah, so um, let's get started with the first thing. So first of all, first question for you guys is what are you sipping on right now um, this wonderful Thursday night? It's really cold in L.A. It's like 40 degrees. I mean, relatively cold. Well, Brandon, I haven't opened my bottle yet. Um, I, I also am not including um, my Thomas H. Handy on my best of 2019 mainly because it's like a series so it's it's not a new product and um so yeah i'm not including that but that obviously would be the best of 2019 but anyways i'm not sure when i'm going to crack my bottle of it brandon i probably will do it for new year's i'll see but if i if next time you're over here if it's open you can definitely try it so how how's that so First thing in my glass, yeah, California cold. So let me know what you guys are drinking as I tell you about my first pour of the night. And that's going to be Old Forester Rye. This is a very overlooked whiskey in my opinion. This came out in February of this year. It is 100 proof. Um, it's their first rye product. And it's damn good. Like, I didn't have high expectation. It's $23. First of all, let me say that. $23. Um... And it's, it's really, really good. It's up there with, I put it on the same playing field as Rittenhouse Rye, which is one of my favorite low rye ryes um, from Heaven Hill, as well as Pikesville. Pikesville is the more premium option, but um, Buffalo Trace store pick. Um, what Buffalo Trace store pick? What? Oh, sorry. Sorry, I was reading two different messages. Um, I, my only bottle of Buffalo Trace I ever bought was a store pick, and it was amazing, so... Uh, yeah, so have you guys had this new Old Forester Rye? Now, you guys know I'm not typically an Old Forester fan. I'm not a huge fan of their typical flavor profile, but their rye is something different and something really good. So I'm going to start with that one tonight. Oh, Steven, you answered my question. Thank you. <laughs> I, I was confused because I, I was just talking about Buffalo Trace, but yeah, I mean this for something that now I don't know the mash bill on this. I'm sure it's out there. I just I don't have it in front of me. This is definitely more rye in it than Rittenhouse and Pikesville. Yes, Donnie. This this is not the old Forester flavor profile. I don't even know if they use. I mean, they're obviously using a different mash bill, but I mean, yeah. I mean, it's it's not the best rye in the world. I mean, I'm just talking about for the price for being twenty two dollars. Yeah. So Donnie, it does have like it's a little reminiscent of like an old Forester 1910 or something like that. But it's it's definitely completely different flavor profile. Like if you like rye and you don't like old Forester, I do recommend trying it, especially a high rye rye. And you know, I mean, 100 proof, that's nothing to laugh about. I mean, bullet rye and you guys know I love dickle rye. Dickle rye and bullet rye, they're the, same. they're the same. They're both from MGP. They're only like 94 proof. And I'm not sure the age on this one either, but I think this one has a bit more age to it too, so... It's a great cocktail rye. Um, oh, Peter, thank you. It's 65% rye. Okay, that's that's pretty good. 20% malted barley and 15% corn. Thank you. And that probably is what the difference is because Old Forester, their regular releases, I'm sure, are very high corn content. So that's why there's a difference. So yeah, I think it's, like you said, Stephen, it's a fantastic cocktail rye. Um, I mean, I, I wouldn't mind you know putting this in any um, rye cocktails. A Manhattan, a Sazerac. I think this is a really good ride for the price. So I got I didn't get a dump glass. That's the one thing I don't have. So I'm gonna have to finish. I'm gonna have to pour a little smaller because I'm gonna have to drink all these. So what is so what is your you guys go to cocktail rye and sipping rye? Um, this would probably be my go to cocktail rye now that I bought it. I've gone through three bottles of this since the start of the year. Um, either this or Rittenhouse. I I love them both. I think this one has a lot more fruitiness on it that I think contributes well to rye cocktails, but. For a sipping rye, I just finished my bottle of Michter's um, Barrel Strength Rye. I have the Toasted Barrel Rye still. I'm saving that. That's really special to me. But the Barrel Strength Rye was probably my favorite rye. That came out this... No, it's been around for a while. I think I just saw it in my state this year. But um, yeah, it's... I really love Michter's Barrel Strength Rye. The regular rye is okay, but their Barrel Strength is just packed full of flavor. Pikes feels a close second. Um... Of course, I mean, I, I've had a Kentucky Owl Rye, so that's, you know, that's up there in price. That's not really on the same, like, level. Knob Creek, that's a good point, um, Stephen. Knob Creek Rye is your go-to cocktail rye. I 
I've only had a store pick of the rye, but I did, I think I reviewed it a couple weeks ago. It was the double barreled rye that they did. Also up there with one of the, my favorite ryes. I, I need to buy a bottle of that. I keep forgetting, but um, Brandon, yeah, sipping rye is make just barrel strength rye. Totally. Well, you even though you don't like rye's. Um, Donnie and uh, Diane don't do cocktails often. Neat folks. Makes sense. I just sometimes I'm getting in the mood for the, for a cocktail. And that's probably because I started drinking cocktails when I was before I was into whiskey. I loved ordering unique cocktails and that kind of worked its way into like an old fashioned. And then I was like, well, maybe I am curious about whiskey. So, um, yeah, he liked that one. Okay, Brandon. Uh, Alberta premium cast strength makes the ultimate old fashioned. Peter, you're the Canadian. Uh, man, I had to get with you. You need to send me some samples. I want to try these, these cast strength Canadian whiskeys. Um, it's something that I've never seen down here in, in, at least in California. I don't know. What about the rest of you guys in America? Have you ever seen, or do you often see cast strength Canadians? Um, let me know. And Peter, I would love to have some samples of that because I always dismiss Canadian, Canadian whiskey, but that's because I haven't had anything that higher proof. So Peter, hit me up. <laughs> um, oh, that's a good one, Stephen. Um, cocktail bourbon is old as a barrel proof. I also use that as my cocktail bourbon. I, I found one bottle of it though. I've only had one bottle. And when I had it, I did use it in old fashions and it's, it's, it's fantastic. So yeah, I mean, on the nose, it's really good. I, I, like I said, I poured a little bit too much of this one, so I'm just try, trying to finish it up because we have several more bottles here to get to. So that's the only rye I have on my list tonight. Um, are, I don't think I don't think there was really much going on in the rye world this year. I know New Riff has their Balboa rye that just came out. I have not had a chance to try it. I do have two bottles that are on their way to me so uh, we get the canadian canada's trash bourbon junkies scored some um alberta premium cast strength oh, that's awesome old ezra seven barrel strength is it's yummy yes i wish i could find it more often like i said i found one bottle it was retail it was like what like 40 or under and fantastic for the price donnie um the cast strength rye from knob creek i haven't had that i've just had the Single barrel, which was a 115 proof, so it wasn't cast strength, but I imagine it's probably pretty similar. <laughs> Even when I shut about New Riff Rye, so I, I didn't have a chance to Google. Is did New Riff start putting out their bourbon and rye this year? Not the Balboa Rye, but their regular releases, because something something that makes you think that it was like in 2018, but maybe it was in 2019. Um, I brought a bottle just in case of the bourbon, just because I wasn't sure. This is a pick, but. I, I didn't want to forget them because I do really like New Riff. I just couldn't remember if their first product came out this year. So let me know if you guys know that. If so, we may break this out in the end. Um, but it's not part of my original lineup that I have here. So um, Cornerstone Rye and um, Parker's Heritage. Yeah, I, I am sure those are great. I just don't have a bottle of them. I've never tried them. So um, yeah, so... Yeah, like I said, there's going to be a lot of things that I don't have that came out this year that are great. But there's also, I grabbed a good majority of the affordable stuff. So let's move on. So we're starting, I'm just keeping in mind the proof of these things. The one I'm going to go to now is l the lowest proof of them all. Um, And it's almost gone. I went through this bottle really quickly. I probably should have started with this one. You guys have seen me review this maybe even twice. <laughs> This is Michter's Toasted Barrel, not bourbon, Sour Mash. This is this year's release. Um, they've done a Toasted Barrel Rye, a Toasted Barrel Bourbon, which I've tried both, both fantastic. This one, though, I think was the first one that I'd ever tried, first of all. I think the rye is better. I mean, you guys saw me review the rye like a couple weeks ago. That, that stuff was fantastic. I just wish this was higher proof. That's the only thing that holds it back from being like the number one. I mean, not that it's number one anyways, but I paid 60 bucks for this. So I paid retail on it. Uh, Brandon, you can't wait to get your bottle of, of what? Um, New Riff or what were we just talking about? I, I changed topics way too quickly. <laughs> um, yeah, so this one is... You guys know their Sour Mash actually this year won an award for best whiskey of the year in some competition somewhere. But I think that was inspiration behind getting the um, Toasted Barrel um, Sour Mash. Oh, Michter's. Oh, what Michter's did you get, um, Brandon? I feel like we haven't talked about that. 
Uh, Donnie says, we got two Michter's 10-year bourbons and a Michter's Toasted Barrel bourbon. Nice. I actually accidentally stole my friend's Toasted Barrel bourbon. I'm, I'm bringing it back to him on Saturday, but um, yeah, that's, that's going to, I mean, so I'm still a little sick, if you guys can't tell. So my nosing skills aren't the best. Toasted Sour Mash. Oh, nice, Brandon. Oh, that's right. One of the other guys in the group got it for you. I got nervous for a second. I'm like, oh, wait, was I supposed to get two Michter's? I'm like, okay, never mind. <laughs> yeah, so this... That toasting element that Michter's does completely changes their um, flavor profile. It adds an additional layer to it that I think is so unique. It's something that I've never had on another bourbon. The only thing that came close to it was that Knob Creek double barreled rye. It has a very similar note. Um, accidentally. No, I did accidentally steal it because I brought this one and I think someone lumped um, both of them together and I went home with it. He kept my 1792 foolproof, so... I told him he could keep it if he likes it. I mean, I'm not a huge 1792 fan, so. Ah, uh, yeah, that's, that's so good on the nose. Um, you can add Michter's Tin Rye and two times barrel strength. Totally out of control. <laughs> the I wish I would have bought two bottles of the barrel strength rye. It's probably my favorite rye that I've bought that's not like a limited release. I mean, it, it technically is a limited release, but it, it's more widespread. I haven't seen it since I bought it. So next thing, next time that pops up, I'm definitely getting another bottle. I do have a Migdor's Tin Rye that I haven't opened yet, though. Is it good, um, Peter? Have you had it? Um, I'm, I'm still debating if I want to open that or maybe trade it for something else eventually. So, so sorry, that was my phone. I already told my husband that I'm sorry. Wow, that campfire note. Um, let me text him just so he knows because he's probably getting us food. Um, that campfire note on that is... Sorry, I accidentally lost my camera instead of dismissing the call. So you guys heard me review this. There is a certain campfire note that I get on these toasted barrels that I think is incredible. It's one of my favorite flavors that I've ever gotten on a whiskey. And I just can't get enough of it. Um, Peter, the toasted barrel strength rye is even better, totally. And that's what I love about the toasted rye is because it is cast strength or barrel strength. The toasted toasted sour mash is only 43%. That's that's low for me, and that's why I can't fully get into it. I think with this one, that campfire ash note that I love about it is overwhelming a bit. And I think I think that the barrel strength rye, the toasted barrel strength rye competes with that flavor and it's a great combination so definitely prefer that over this one i just I, I knew this was a new product this year so that's why i'm including it today um good luck by the way donnie that, that i i really want a weller foolproof pick um i had a couple leads this year but none of them really came through so um i haven't even found the regular one honestly i'm just thankful for brandon for giving me the sample of it um of course we, we reviewed it when he was over here so by the way um brandon is gonna come back soon and do another stream with me or easy he's, he's either gonna come here or we're gonna like find a way to split screen it so stay tuned for that we're, we're still figuring that out but it's gonna happen very soon hopefully next month um do i like scotch so that's a controversial topic um donnie um so i i originally didn't i i in, i started into whiskey with bourbon um i only really expanded into scotch when I started going to these like local whiskey group meetups that I've, I've been going to for the past almost year now um because people bring out some of the best scotches I, I feel like some of the best scotches out there they bring out some ridiculous bottles um I so when I first got into scotch of course the PD stuff was like no never never but I learned that I enjoy peatiness more than I enjoy the there's like a I don't want to say bile, but bile. There's like a, a sour note on a lot of scotches. Um, Glen Morangi or Glen Morangi was the first one that I got it on. And it's the most off-putting element of scotch. So I, at first I didn't like scotch because I had tried those. And then I switched to, I have a bottle of Ardbeg Ugadal, which is kind of a limited release Ardbeg. Cast strength, fantastic. And I think I only like peated scotches that are finished. I like having that extra sherry or the port or whatever they finish it in that helps balance out the smoke because if it's just a peated scotch like a, like a Lafroig tin or something it's not really for me but if there's something beyond that peat um Lagavulin 16 is also there's like that salty brininess that I really like so I'll say sort of um <laughs> um yeah but I also I've recently got into um a bottle of 
uh, what is that one called? Abunda. Abunda? It's something Abunda. It's a cast strength, sherry finished um, Highland Scotch, I think. And it's like Ab- Abundal Abunda. You guys, you, I'll tell you guys later, but <laughs> it's, it's a, it's a sherry finished scotch that I think is incredible and it's not peated. So I am definitely a scotch fan. I just prefer bourbon and rye because that was my like entry into whiskey. So, so yeah, the campfire on the Mictors is not the same as the campfire on a, a smoky scotch. It's more of like, it's reminiscent of it, but it's not that deep, dark, like strong, uh, smokiness. It's more of like a just in the air whereas Lafroy is like you like like you're literally going up to the fire and you're like that's like a Lafroy. this is more like you're sitting by the fire and the smoke blows in your face for like two seconds so it's a similar note but it's a little bit different thank you donnie it's abalor abun abun abunada ab, whatever that look at donnie's comment uh that's what it is that is i got it for 66 dollars, which is really cheap by the way that is one of my favorite scotches. I actually tried it at a local whiskey meetup and I fell in love with it. And I was like, I gotta get a bottle. So I went and got a bottle. So big fan of that one. Richie Z, what is up? Thank you for stopping in. Um, we are on whiskey number two of the year. Not, I'm not going, these aren't in order, but my second favorite new release whiskey of the year. And it is the Mictors Toasted Barrel Sour Mash. Ab- Abuna, thank you. That's very helpful. Like I said, I'm not a scotch guy, but I, I do appreciate a good scotch, and that's a damn good scotch. So, <laughs> um, Lefroy Triple Cask. I had the Lefroy PX Cask. Um, I think it's PX. That was really good. Like I said, I just really like finished. If I'm going to drink an Isla scotch, it needs to be finished, and that's that's kind of what I prefer. Yeah, I would love this Mictor Sour Mash much, much more. If it was higher proof, because that forty three percent just kind of just doesn't doesn't do it for me. I mean, flavor wise, so I could sip this all day. As you can tell, I just bought this bottle like a couple months ago. It's already this low, so it's 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 a good one, but it's it doesn't like it doesn't have that punch that I desire. Batch twenty six. I didn't realize they did batches. I'll have to check what my batch is. Um, I just bought it this year, so I imagine it's just a recent batch. But so what we've done so far is Old Forester Rye and Mictor's Toasted Barrel Sour Mash. So, what other, so since we're almost at the halfway point, I'll go, ahead, I'll go ahead and pose the question to you guys. What was, or what are some of your favorite things that came out in 2019, and have you been able to get your hands on them? I'm curious, because I, I know Brandon teased one earlier that he said. It, it is soft, but it's a really delicious flavor profile. What are the best things that you've bought this year? I'm curious. It could be scotch. It could be bourbon. It could be Canadian whiskey. What is your favorite thing that you've ever bought this year that's new? Brandon says well or foolproof, of course. Um, Lafroy Cardias Triple Wood is cast strength. Cast, yeah, I mean, I haven't had a cast strength Lafroy unless that PX cast was cast strength. Like I said, I try a lot of things at these meetups. So my side scotch that I go to once in a while is Tamdu cast strength. I, I haven't heard of that one, Stephen. I'll have to check it out. Um, I think castrant scotches are overlooked, not that they're overlooked, but most people, sorry, most people that I know that are into scotch aren't into the castrant stuff, so I think, I feel like a lot of people that just generally like scotch prefer the more mellow flavors. I'm a castrant whore, so (laughs) we're going to move on to another 100 proof one. Um, Yeah, that's a good spot next. This one is a new release of this year, but not technically. This one comes from Kentucky. This, people from Kentucky may be a bit spiteful about this one. I know um, after having to get my hands on a bottle of the old version of this, I was really disappointed we never got that for $13. This went from a $13 whiskey to a $40 whiskey. So you guys probably guess what I'm talking about. This is the new Heaven Hill Bottled and Bond. So this came out across the country except Kentucky. We just got it in California about two weeks ago. Um, it's, it's taken a while to get here. So this one is a seven-year-old bottled in bond whiskey from Heaven Hill. Now, Heaven Hill bottled in bond existed before. It was discontinued last year. It was a six-year-old product. It was 15 or under dollars. So fortunately, I have a friend that scored um, Brandon and I a bottle of it to try. 
And um, yeah, that'll be a separate video coming eventually, by the way. Um, I just picked these up last week. So I, I want to compare the old label, Heaven Hill Bottle and Bond, with the new one. But today, we're just going to talk about the new one because it was a new release of 2019 in my book. So Donnie, Woodford Chocolate Malted Dry. I've heard that's, that's, that's really good. I haven't had a chance to try it, though. I had a chance to buy it, but I was like, I would like to try it first. Um, Peter says, Ball Blair, 1993, from Gordon and McPhail. That's interesting. What is that? Because that's my birth year. I, I, I seek after whiskeys for my birth year. Last year, I missed out. There was a scotch that was at Costco for like 100 bucks or less. That was from 1993. Missed out on it. I regret it. Um, I'm either trying to find something that was distilled in 1993 or released in 1993. So like vintage whiskey. So... Um, if you guys happen to come across anything, tag me in those posts, um, wherever they may be. Not that they're on Facebook or in like a secondary market or whatever, but you know, that's, that's, that's something I seek out. I've never had a, I hadn't had a whiskey from 1993 until I visited Kentucky and went to the It's Bourbon Night meetup. Yeah. So this is brand new for this year. Um, I have only tried it once, so I'm happy to revisit it. My favorite, th so Steven says his favorite thing he bought this year was the dusty 15 year beam decanter. I don't blame you, Steven. <laughs> that, that sounds amazing. I've never had dusty beam, but I've heard so many good things. I was very tempted. I saw a post on the before mentioned, um, may not, may or may not be a Facebook group of a 1993 Baker's and it was $200 and I was so tempted because I was like, oh, like that's like birth year and it's Jim Beam and, it, and $200 is a lot, but like... In the scheme of Dusty's, $200 isn't that bad. So I didn't buy it, but I missed it. Um, Donnie, you mentioned liking the Woodford Wheat before. It's good. It's just not one of my favorites, personally. Kentucky Owl Batch 3 Rye. I've only had the Batch 1 and 2, but I'm sure the Batch 3 is exceptional, Stephen. So on the nose, this is Heaven Hill. <laughs> I mean, there's not really much to say. So you guys know I was a big fan. Oh, God, I'm about to sound hipster. I was a big fan of Henry McKenna 10 year before it went viral. That sounds hipster, but I really, really was. I had been buying that for like two, almost three years. That has been one of my go-to bottles for $26. Now, since it's gone up in price, I bought a couple bottles for 40 and I haven't bought it since because it's just really, it's, it's good, but like I've had a few inconsistent bad bottles and I don't want to commit too much to that right now. So that's the whole reason I have not bought it. Now, the weird thing is that still goes for $40 when it pops up. It's very rare to pop up, but when it pops up, it goes for 40. I also got this for 40. Technically, I got it for like 34 at Costco, but it puts this in a weird spot, but I think eventually McKenna is going to go up in price and this is going to stay about where it's at. So this will be my replacement. We're going to see if it holds up to that $40 price tag, um, slightly less at Costco, but um, so Richie Z says, some of my favorites this year are Four Roses Small Batch Select. That is, so the reason I don't have that one, that's a very good one. I totally would have included it. The only reason is I had a friend pick up a bottle of it for me and I haven't been able to meet him in like four or five months. Um, so I don't have a bottle of it, but I told him to buy me a bottle of it. So I don't want to, I should buy another one though. I and mean, honestly, it's good enough. And you guys know, I'm not, I'm not the biggest Four Roses fan, but that Small Batch Select is something really good. Um... Russell store pick and little book one. Still thinking of favorite scotches. Um, I have makers is coming up soon, so stick, stay tuned. <laughs> um, but yeah, Russell store picks of course and little book one. I, the whole reason I didn't include little book three, which I just got this year, I I'm sticking to ones that are new releases, like completely new products or like new re-releases. So I didn't include any Elijah Craig's or any Booker's or little books. So. Of course, those are are incredible. You guys know. You guys already know that. So, let's go ahead and try the Heaven Hill though. On the nose, it does remind me a lot of Henry McKenna. It's a little, little less oaky. I mean, of course, it's, it's a little younger, but, and it's. I mean, it's the same proof, which is weird, but it's not really jumping out of the glass. Let me go ahead and taste it. Yeah, flavor profile, very very similar to McKenna. I think it's a little less of a mouthfeel. It has a fantastic chocolate finish though. And I don't even get that on Henry McKenna. That oak really presents itself as like a chocolate, like even like a chocolate covered, like nut. I'm trying to think, I, I've had like a chocolate covered nut that wasn't a peanut. It was like an, it wasn't an almond. 
Anyway, it's like a chocolate covered nut that is on the finish that I think is fantastic for $40. That finish, while it is a little weak in the mouthfeel department, um, the finish, it's not long, but when it hits you, it's really, really good, really flavorful. Oh, thank you, Brandon. Yes, if you guys hit the like button, that's really appreciated. I, you guys are always good about that, so thank you guys for the fit it so far. Um, and if you're new here, um, don't forget to subscribe. Most of you guys are here every week, so just like hanging out with you guys. So, But if you're new here, welcome, and uh, would love you to subscribe and hang out with us on Thursday nights. You recently revisited McKenna. I, I have an open bottle, but I haven't... I, have a, I also have a backup bottle, but... I'm holding on to that, that open bottle just for a little bit longer. This is reminiscent. It's definitely a different product than McKenna. So I don't want people making direct comparisons. I think this kind of took over a good spot because McKenna was underpriced. Let's be honest. $26 to $30 for Henry McKenna. Ridiculously under, underpriced for a 10-year-old 100-proof bottle in Bond Bourbon. This, though, feels more appropriate for a price. Like I said, I got it for $33 at Costco. $40 elsewhere. It's really good for the price. I mean, it's one of the better ones if you're talking about in that price range, 100 proof. Yeah, that, I think the finish is what makes it interesting. It's like a, yeah, it's like a nutty chocolatiness that you guys know I love Heaven Hill, not sorry, Heaven Hill, um, Evan Williams Bottle and Bond. I don't really get that note on that. So I, I would, probably the episode that I compare this to the old label, Heaven Hill, I'm going to compare it to an Evan Williams bottle and bomb because I think, I mean, that's that's the new 15 and under bottle. Heaven Hill bottle and bond is no longer that price. So I'm even if the old label Heaven Hill bottle bond is better, I'm kind of discounting it because like you can't get it anymore. So, but I, I want to compare this, the old label and Evan Williams bottle and bond. I think that'd be a really fun episode. What do you guys think? I think it'd be fun. Um, Richie says, have you ever had McAllen 18? I have not. You know what's funny? I had my first McAllen yesterday. I, I know, believe it or not, but like I had never tried it. And I had the, um, just the, it was the 12 year double barrel. So very basic. It came in like a little, basically my, um, my husband's family sent over like this whiskey sampler pack. It's called like a dude box or something. I don't know, but it actually had some really good, it had some Knob Creek in there, it had some Maker's Mark. It had some Glenfiddich. It even had like a Highland Park, which I've never had before. So I'm going to try that soon. But it had Macallan 12, and I, I'd never had it before. And, yeah, I I am not the biggest fan of the 12-year-old, I'll be honest. But I'm curious to try some of their older stuff, especially if they have finished stuff. I think, like I said, I, I love finished scotches. So I need to look into that. Um, should compare it with Evan Lee's Bottom Bond. Yeah, yeah, Steven, I definitely will. I think I think that's it's called for because that's the new underrated, honestly, totally for the price, that and Wild Turkey 101, those are my go-tos. Those are my go-to, not necessarily just mixing bourbons, but go-to cheap bottle and bond bourbons. Whew, I talked a lot. <laughs> Running out of breath. I gotta pace myself. Um, do you have Ed Williams single barrel? So I did an episode about a month or two ago, maybe it was like two months ago, where I compared a bunch of Ed Williams products. I had the I had the bottle and bond. I had the single barrel, and then I had the um, 1783, which is the whiskey that got me into whiskey. Most of you guys know, but Evan Williams 1783 small batch got me into whiskey. So compared them all, and out of the three, Bottle and Bond took the cake, I guess I would say. The single barrel, it did have a little bit more, little bit more complex notes, but the lower proof for me, I feel like it was harder to find them. Whereas the Bottle and Bond, that 100 proof set it apart. So that's why I prefer the Bottle and Bond. Um, so Donnie didn't care about 1783. Yeah, I, um, I've revisited it recently and it's not as good as I remember it being, <laughs> but again, it's the whiskey that got me into whiskey. So it has a place in my heart. It reminds me of the notes of this Heaven Hill. So I would definitely recommend this over the Evan Williams 1783, but it's, it's, it, it was a good starter bourbon for me to see that there's a lot more to bourbon than Jim Beam White Label or... Um, Jack Daniels, which is Tennessee whiskey, whatever. Um, oh, what is this? Perfect bourbon for me. For me, okay, Peter. North Star Spirits, Heaven Hill, nine years, sixty-six percent. Finish in Ardbeg's cast. This is getting confusing. What? That sounds crazy. So it's Heaven Hill. It's like an independent 
uh, producer, nine year old, sixty six percent. We're talking like almost. I mean, that's like Elijah Craig Barrel Proof territory. You guys know I love Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Um, finish an hard bed cast, Peter. If we ever if we ever talk about samples, sending samples my way, um, I would love to try that. That sounds that sounds really really cool. I I cannot stress enough how interesting that sounds. Uh, okay, so gotta get through these. I guess I, I did start a little late, so we'll go a little over time. I was just saying that it was already 6.45, but I did start a little late, so I definitely want to get through these, because this is, like I said, this is a really special episode for me, and this, honestly, I'll tell you guys now, this will be my last live stream of 2019. Um, I'm going home next week for Christmas. I'm going back to South Carolina. Um, right now, for those of you that don't know, I'm in um, Los Angeles. But I'm going back to South Carolina for all of next week, and then I'll be back the following week, but it'll be after New Year's. So that'll be, I don't, I don't know the topic of that one yet, but Juan, who's not here in the chat right now, but he he gave me a mystery sample, so I'm going to start the stream with that next time, if he's able to make it. So Crazy Heaven Hill foreign market stuff. That's interesting. I had never heard of that. I never knew that they did that. Oh, I gotta do some research now. I need to check out North North Star Spirits and what Heaven Hill exports. That's near has not. Yeah, totally. Have I had any barrel bourbons? I have only tried the Dovetail, which I actually finished off my sample of it last night. That's really good, but it scares me because I'm like, everyone's like, oh, Dovetail's the best. I'm like, it's good. It's not my favorite thing. I don't I don't know if I would really buy a bottle of it. Um But I know they do some really interesting things, so I I do wanna try more barrel. I just need to try it at a bar or have a friend that has a bottle. I just don't want to commit to a bottle of it. So if you guys have samples of barrel bourbon, I'm always open to samples, by the way. If, if you guys want to send me something to review on the channel, I will gladly do it. Um, just send me a message probably on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook. Um, Twitter and Instagram, it's my name, Clifton, and then my last name, M-C-D-N-L. Um, does this show my... Nope, that's not it. I thought I might have had a text there. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's Clifton M C D N L. Just send me a message. I'll give you my address and send it to me. Um, cause I would love, I love samples. I love reviewing things and trying them before I buy them. Um, Caden, Caddenhead, Heaven Hill bottles are bucket list for me. Ah, you guys have got me interested in something totally new. So let's move on to something that was mentioned earlier in the chat. And I actually just bought, oh, you guys already saw it. <laughs> I just mentioned this bottle. I, I just bought this bottle on last Friday. So I've only had one pour from it, but you guys, the new Maker's Mark RC6 limited edition. Um, there's the info on it right there. If it'll focus, it's probably not gonna focus with my face in the shot. Oh well, I'll tell you. <laughs> it's a 2019 limited release called RC6. And what it is, is a stave, just kind of like the Maker's private selects are. It's like a their whiskey is finished with additional staves. This one is, finished with 10 virgin toasted American oak staves. So it's kind of like a toasted mixtures in a way. Um, oh, thank you, Richie. Yeah, I am on Instagram. Um, I think I follow you. I don't know if you follow me, but I follow you. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll um, I'll message you. Just, yeah, I would love samples. Man, that would be awesome. I appreciate it. That's a really good pork, cork pop, by the way. Yeah, Brandon, I'm bringing this on Saturday, so you'll get a chance to try it. So this is actually, I didn't mention it, but it's, it's bar bottled at 54.1%, so 108.2 proof. So you guys know I love the higher proof Maker's Mark. I'm not a fan of standard Maker's Mark. I love, love, love Maker's 46 cast strength. But even regular Maker's 46 I'm a fan of, and private selects are fantastic. So I had a good feeling I would like this before I bought it. <laughs> but yeah, Peter, let's we can figure that out. Um, message me somewhere, and we'll figure out something, so... Yeah, so I have only had one pour of this, Richie, and I went up, uh, Brandon can attest to it, um, in my local whiskey group, I was going on, I was a little drunk, okay, but I was going on and on about how the more I tried this, the better I liked it. I let it sit out for like a few minutes, came back to it, and I even smelled the glass at the end, and it's probably one of the best noses I've ever gotten on an empty glass of whiskey in my life, so... Yeah, so on the nose at first, it just kind of does remind me of the Maker's 46. It doesn't kind of jump out of the glass at first, so I was like, okay... What am I getting myself into? Um, just regular makers. And this 
Uh, let's be honest, this is more expensive than Makers 46, more expensive than Makers Cast Strength. This was $60, so it's up there in price. But once you taste it, I don't think you'll be complaining too much. Honestly, I thought that the Makers 46 stave was my favorite stave from Makers Mark. Whatever they do with these these toasted, 10 virgin toasted American oak staves, it's so fantastic. It brings a level of oakiness that I've never found on Makers Mark. Of course, there's the standard, you know, oakiness you get on a bourbon. But this accentuates that flavor. I'm curious what they say on the back of it. Um... So this, so the interesting thing is, this is kind of advertised as bringing out the fruity flavors, which it totally does. It has a little bit of that, almost like a banana that Old Forester has. A little bit different though. Very, very fruit forward. Sweet. If you told me this was a finished whiskey, like with a sherry or like a, like a wine cast finish, I would almost say like a ca Cabernet finished whiskey. I would totally believe you. Um... But sorry, my husband, he's like picking up food. He's like texting me. So it's not, it's not finished with any kind of like wine casks or anything. It's just finished with oak staves, which is so cool. It's, it's toasted. Of course, it does not taste like the Michter's. I, I thought I would make that comparison. It doesn't taste like the Michter's toasted barrel, but fruit. Yeah, yeah. It's totally fruit forward. But I think the most interesting thing to me is because I get a lot of fruitiness on the Makers 46, especially the Makers 46 cast strength. So I'm a little bit used to that. But what I think it does is it brings out a lot more of a wood note that I've never got on a Makers before. And you guys know I love Oaky Bourbons. I love my Knob Creek 14-year-olds. Uh, I just got a Knob Creek 15-year-old. I haven't tried it yet. Uh, God, I can't wait for that. So I love Oaky Bourbons, and I really like what it's doing to the oak on this. If you guys see this for 60 bucks or even, yeah, probably 60 or less, give it a try. Even if you, it, so let's say you've only had standard Maker's Mark, you got to expand your horizons because <laughs> I, I avoided Maker's Mark products for so long, but then I had Maker's 46. I was like, hey, wait, this isn't that bad. Then I had Maker's 46 cast strength and some private selects and I was like, holy crap, Maker's Mark has some incredible products out there. So, um, Rebel Yell, Rebel Yell 10 year, Steven, I actually just finished my bottle of Rebel Yell 100 proof, which I think that's a new release product too, right? I, I, I've did a review of that recently. I think that's a fantastic weeded bourbon and I feel like Rebel Yell gets a bad rap based on their standard product, but that 100 proof Rebel Yell is probably definitely better than standard Maker's Mark. I put it up there equivalent with Maker's 46 and supposedly it's a little bit cheaper. I haven't seen it on the shelves. I actually bought that one in Kentucky in October when I visited, but I would have included that tonight, but I finished off the bottle, so can't include that. But yeah, Rebel Yell 100 proof. I have not had the 10 year though. I'm, I'm sure it's great. What's the cast? What's the cast? What's the cask? What's the proof on the 10 year Rebel Yell? Um, is it proof down or is it like barrel proof? I, I, I saw it at the gift shop, but I, I went with the 100 proof instead because I, I've been curious to try that one. 10 years been around about two years. Um, single barrel. Yeah, yeah. I saw it there, but I, I, I really want to try the 100 proof. Okay, it's 100 proof. Okay. It was just a little pricey for me at the time. And I was like, this one's like 20 bucks and this other one's like like 100 bucks or something. I don't, I don't remember exactly what it was, but. Uh, fit, probably your favorite weeded bourbon. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure that's probably true. I haven't had it, but the 100 proof, just the regular Rebel Yell 100 proof is fantastic. And I really recommend it. Even if you've had Rebel Yell and you hate it, Try the new 100 proof. It's it's older for sure. And that proof is just wonderful. So so let's move on to... So no one ever got back to me about the new riff if if their bourbon and rye, their regular releases came out this year. I don't know. I don't want to waste time Googling it for you guys. So if they did, I definitely think new riff is probably one to include for best of 2019. I'm just not sure if they did. Um, I know their single barrel rye is a new thing. I haven't had a bottle of that. I've tried it thanks to Ian. Um, this is just a single barrel bourbon and it's a pick from, um, bourboner or seal box. So that's just here just in case, but Richie says, get rebel 10 if you see it. 
awesome we did. We'll do. Like I said, I was at the gift shop and I'd already spent a lot on my trip. It was like towards the end of my trip. So I, I did pass it up then, but I would love to try it. I'll definitely try it at a bar if I can find it. So let's move on to our, no, it's not. I have, I have a surprise for you guys at the end. If you, if you stick around to the end, there's a surprise. Um, but the next one that I'm going to highlight is one that many of you may not have had because I do not, it's nowhere in California. I have not seen it in California. It is WB Saffle. This is part of Wild Turkey's, um, or technically it's not labeled as Wild Turkey. It's labeled as um, uh, the, the company, Whiskey Baron's Collection. But it's, it's Wild Turkey Juice. This one um, is widely known as a lot of people's favorite from the Whiskey Baron Collection. And I had to get a bottle when I was in Kentucky because I could not find it anywhere in California. And I would have to agree with that. It's 107 proof. It's based on an old label whiskey. As you can tell, the label is designed to look really old. Why is my focus not working? Come on. Come on. Aw. Wait, wait, there you go. Okay. There we go. Okay, so it is, it's based on an old label. That that label is so cool. It has a little tax strip thing there. Um, it's 107 proof. Um, it looks like it was made from 1843 to 1910. I don't know if that... No, never mind. Sorry, that's wrong. Um, bottle 1843. Whatever. Either way. <laughs> either way, this is based on an old label whiskey. So... New Rift started last year. Thank you, Brandon. I appreciate that. So like I said, this is Wild Turkey. So for a while, this this Whiskey Baron series was kind of done outside of the radar of the master distillers at Wild Turkey. They weren't really involved in the project, but I think they learned that like people didn't like that. So they came back with this one. They were definitely involved with this. And I think this is one of the better Wild Turkey products I've ever had. Um... So I'm just catching up with the chat. Um, Steven says, Saffle was young. I got to drink that and enjoy the view from Wild Turkey Distillery back in April. Oh, it sounds awesome. I, I was at the Wild Turkey Distillery in October, and we had the, um, we did the tour, and the tour was okay, but the tasting was also okay. I wish I could have had, you know, a more involved tour. It was very corporate, dare I say, but it it was okay, and I love their, bar. their tasting room was awesome. But it just wasn't, it just wasn't what I expected. But I would have loved to sit on their patio and drink some more. I just, I just did the tour and then I had Eddie Russell sign a bottle of Wild Turkey 101. Sorry, Jimmy Russell, my bad. Had Jimmy Russell sign a bottle of Wild Turkey 101 and yeah, made memories. That, that was a pretty cool day. But the tour itself was like, yeah, it was okay. Oh, Peter, I'm sorry to hear that. Sorry to hear that the trade fell through. Uh, Richie says the only barren bottles I see are old Rippy and Bon and Lillard. Where did I find the WB Saffle? I fortunately had a friend pick it up in Kentucky for me. It's apparently on the shelves all over in Kentucky, um, even like Kroger and stuff. So I'm really sad about that because I agree in California. I don't, I don't know where you're based, Richie, but, um, in California in Southern California, the only things on the shelves are Bon and Lillard and occasionally an old Rippy, but like very, very rarely. It's it, it's really disappointing, and I haven't tried either of them. I'm not saying they're good or bad. I just heard mediocre things about them where I heard that this was the best, and I gotta I gotta agree. So let's go ahead and taste it. Um, Brandon, good point. Woodford, I didn't do the tour. I just did the tasting. I will say this though: a lot of people put down the Woodford tour. The tour ends with the tasting, so I just hopped in on a tasting, and the way they taste Woodford is really good. They have a flavor wheel that you kind of like identify at certain points. So, yes, you're just trying, like, regular Woodford and Double Oaked and their rye. But the way they explain the flavor reel with, like, the the nutty and the oaky and the sweet, they do a really good job of that, especially for someone that's new to bourbon. So I commend them on their tasting experience. But, yeah, the, I imagine the tour is not that great. That's the whole reason I, I avoided it. So Okay, Richie, you're a Bay Area. That's awesome. I actually went to there. I went to San Francisco for my honeymoon. I really want to go back. I, I love that city. Um, just like the Fisherman's Wharf area is so cool. So <laughs> I got to go back. I haven't been back for like two, almost three years. So I got to go back. Woodford grounds are beautiful. And I had heard that beforehand. 
Um, I really wish I would have done the tour though, because always so. I mean, driving into it, there's like horse pastures everywhere. It does not feel like a distillery. So, yeah. Um, Rich, Richie, I'll think of that online. Yeah, or just make friends in Kentucky. I mean, I'm sure they would have shipped it to me, but I knew I was going to be in the area, so I had them pick me up a bottle. It was part of my um, five liters I carried home, but I'm glad I did. So let's go ahead and taste it. I haven't given any notes on this yet. I've just, I've just talked it up and haven't tried it. So let's go ahead and taste it. Yeah. So I don't know how many of you are familiar with Single Cast Nation. They do barrel picks for not mostly scotch. It's almost exclusively scotch. But they have something going with Wild Turkey where they do picks of barrels from Wild Turkey, bottle it cast strength, give you all the info, the age, all that stuff. This is very reminiscent of one of the Single Cast Nation Wild Turkey picks. It has a similar depth to it that I don't get on regular wild turkey products. Yeah, you, know, you guys know I like wild turkey. Wild turkey 101, one of the best values in bourbon. Rare breed is a fantastic cast strength, although it's going up in price and it's kind of hard to hard to compete with like the Elijah Craig's of the world, but it's going but back when it was like 40 bucks, one of the best values. Russell's picks, I'm iffy on. I'm not a huge fan of the Russell's flavor profile. I know that's weird. There's just a certain like sweet tart, smarties, candy double bubble like powder note I get on Russell's that's not my favorite note um so I'm not a biggest fan of Russell I've had some fantastic picks I'm just not the biggest Russell's fan however this takes some of the best aspects of wild turkey that spice that even though they're not a high ride there's a lot of spice there it does what single cast nation does and that's why I think I like it so much it doesn't bottle it cast strength but 107 proof I mean the only Higher proof wild turkey. I mean, yeah, there's Russell's and there's 101, but there's really not much else that wild turkey is putting out that's that higher proof. So I think this is a fantastic experiment, and I wish it was more available because I would totally buy bottles of this. It's a little pricey. I mean, I paid 50 for this little bottle, so it'd be about 100 for a 750 milliliter. But I think this is probably the best wild turkey product I've ever had. <laughs> you had two single cast nation scotch bottles that are empty. They're so good. I went to a tasting event where they put out like four or five of their bottles. So good. I'm not even a huge Scotch fan, but I think they know their stuff and they know what appeals to people. And I trust them. If I ever see them on the shelves, I trust that whatever they picked, I don't care what it is, it's going to be freaking amazing. So those guys have earned their reputation and I'm happy to purchase from them. Steven, that's a good point. I had a single barrel rye. It wasn't a pick, but it was just regular single barrel rye. It was really good, and I, I, I'm sad that I hadn't visited it sooner. I haven't tried the regular rye. I've only had the single barrel, but that single barrel that I bought earlier this year, so good. I need to get more into that because that's up there with, like, Pikesville with, like, that sippable level. That's – that would totally – I mean, I still prefer Michter's Barrel Strength Rye, but the the toasted – well, not toasted. I think that the Russell single barrel rye is up there with Pikesville, basically – I don't know if I could pick between the two. They're both they're both so good. So, so as we near the end of our stream, um, thank you guys for hanging out so much tonight. Like I said, I'm sorry about being late, but I'm really was really excited about this stream. So, so let's move on to my final pick of best of. Wait, I was googling this and I wanted to make sure my Google went through. I think so. I, I don't know for sure. I don't know this for sure. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure this whiskey came out today. Or <laughs> this year. You guys can tell I'm getting to near the end of my stream. <laughs> um, this one is something that came out this year, as far as I know. And I think it has done wonders for whiskey so far. I think it's still slowly gaining popularity. I wanted to end, the, end with this one tonight because I knew it would completely blow my palate for everything else, but I think it deserves a mention. I'm talking about Screwball Peanut Butter Flavored Whiskey. So, I know, I'm losing viewers now, but listen, listen. I know that this is not bourbon. I also know that this is barely whiskey because it's flavored but i gotta say 
it's not that bad. So my reason for including this is I've heard so many th- people talking about this. People that aren't into whiskey, they're like, oh, have you had the peanut butter whiskey? And I brought this to like gatherings of friends that aren't whiskey fans. They will, they, I mean, obviously I, this has only been in one gathering and you can see how much is gone. So I think that what Screwball did, yes, it doesn't appeal to the major bourbon drinkers out there. Sorry, I'm a little, a little burpy because I'm anticipating how sweet this is. Um, this is under $25. It's made in San Diego. It is basically exactly how it sounds. <laughs> Brandon, stop. It's exactly how it sounds. It is peanut butter flavored whiskey, but I give them credit. I have had lots of flavored whiskeys that are just so sweet and so off-putting that I just cannot drink them. I gotta have them in like a shot or something, but, but it is actually, I mean, you gotta nose it. It's, it's peanut butter, but it's not like the overly sweet peanut butter. It's like natural peanut butter on the nose. So let's taste it real quick. I, I, don't dismiss me yet. Let, let's get through this. It warms my heart. It's like a peanut butter cookie. It's not overly sweet. I'm, I'm going to be honest. Like Almost every flavored whiskey I've ever bought um, has been overwhelmingly sweet. Jack Daniels honey, Jim Beam honey, even American... American um, like Wild Turkey's Honey Whiskey, they're all overwhelmingly sweet. Yes, this is sweet, obviously. It's not a bourbon. But that nuttiness, I think, complements whiskey so well. So for all the college kids out there drinking this, maybe it's their intro into whiskey. Let's let's give it credit where credit is due. A lot of people, this will be their first whiskey other than like Fireball. But the first whiskey that they maybe can sip on. Fireball, you don't sip on. I mean, maybe you can, but... I'm not a fan of that. I could sip on this. Now, I probably shouldn't because it's super sweet and it probably has a lot of calories. But as a dessert whiskey, that which I think a lot of people do consider whiskey a dessert drink, definitely recommend Screwball. Um, I do need to try that. Donnie, um, I think actually um, Diana mentioned it, um, mixing Screwball with banana liqueur and uh, Godiva dark chocolate. Oh, it sounds amazing. So not that I'm saying you guys should rush out and buy you a bottle of Screwball. <laughs> Not that I'm saying it's the best whiskey of 2019, obviously, but it gained major popularity this year, and I think it's going to bring a lot of people into whiskey that aren't normally whiskey fans, so give it credit for that. Is it more Jiffy's or Skippy? Um, so I don't, I don't really know name brands of peanut butter. I think Jiffy's is the more natural tasting, or is it Skippy that's not? One of them tastes a little more natural, one's a little more sweet. The only reason I don't know is because we buy the ones that are labeled as natural peanut butter. So the ones you got to stir, the oils separate sep- separate from the rest of it. So we buy the natural peanut butter. Oh, no, I forgot one. We're going to... Okay, so the one I forgot, the one I forgot is my favorite whiskey of 2019. So, whoo, this is a runner-up. Not kidding, just kidding. This is like a... This is <laughs> honorable mention. How about that? This one's an honorable mention. Elvis would have loved that drink. He definitely would have. PB and J whiskey. Oh, don't tell me that. That sounds awesome. I know people are mixing this with like a like a raspberry liqueur and making like a PBJ drink. Give Fireball all the credit. It got you laid with several ladies. Hey, cheers to that. Um, so this isn't my last pour of the night. I actually have one more pour. I know, I know. But this is honorable mention. This is not not fully my favorite choice of the year. I just think is worth mentioning because this is a really um i think it's making an impact on whiskey so let me finish this one i almost forgot the most important whiskey of the night brandon you made me run to go get this i paused my stream to go get this whiskey i have one more that i think is the best new release of 2019 And that is something that I don't have a bottle of, but I was given a gracious, gracious, very gracious for the sample I got from Brandon. This is, of course, Weller Full Proof. Um, If you caught our stream together a couple weeks ago, we reviewed this like in its entirety. But I think this is probably the best product that came out this year. Now, you can disagree, but I think what they did with this Yes, it's scarce. Yes, it's hard to come by. Yes, I haven't been able to find a bottle of it myself. But until you've tried it, 
I think you'll realize the hype behind it. After Screwball, I know, Peter, that, that was a mistake. I had this bottle sitting behind all the other ones, and I forgot about it. So, should not have did this after Screwball. Let me, I, I've cleansed my palate. I'll do it one more time before drinking it, so. Um, Donnie, so, you, you must have missed the stream that I did with Brandon. Brandon and I drunkenly did that, because I didn't, I had the 107 over here just to maybe pull it out, but I, I ended up comparing them. So, my final... I'll give you a little bit of a spoiler, but definitely check out that episode in case you missed it. I think, no, Brandon, we already did that. I think the foolproof accentuates all the things that the 107 does well. I think for retail, I would pick the foolproof, but I was, I was saying, I don't remember, same, I don't remember doing it, <laughs> but I think they're very, very similar, but I would definitely splurge a little bit for the foolproof, not secondary wise, but like on the shelf wise, retail, foolproof is incredible, so Cheers to 2019. I, I guess I guess this is a good note to end on. Same here, Richie. I have not had any luck. Brandon was very lucky. And also, he's like a smooth talker. I feel like he smooth talked the... Uh, the I don't know if they were the owner or just an employee at the liquor store, but we may have not gotten a little drunk. Yes. Yes, we did. Yeah, I have not gotten a bottle of it either, Richie. I've looked for it. I had some leads, and they all fell through, so... I'm just thankful for Brandon for the sample. I did rinse the glass though; it doesn't smell like peanut butter, so don't worry. I'm not. I'm not being like falsely influenced by that. That mouthfeel on that, so thick. Not because of the peanut butter whiskey, I promise. So thick. So warming. That proof is a perfect proof, and I I, I remember saying this during the stream. Yes, it's not cast strength, but the proof that they picked to bottle this at, I think is the perfect proof. I, I wouldn't want it to be a lot hotter than that, but man, it's such an improvement over the 107. Yes, let me finish my cheers. <laughs> cheers to 2019 with what I think is my favorite whiskey 2019, and I hope to get a bottle of it someday. Weller foolproof, not available everywhere, <laughs> but when you see it, and you see it for retail or under a hundred bucks, shoot, I would pay, I'd pay up to 120 for this, I'll be honest. Pick it up. You won't regret it. Even if you're not a big weeded fan. I mean, we talked about a weeder earlier today. The RC6, fantastic for $60. Much, much, much more readily available. This one though, you never see it. I'm still looking for it. <laughs> so I prefer it over the RC6, but the RC6 is great for the price. So I definitely recommend that. So 75 there, even that, that, that's, that's, it's still a good whiskey, but this foolproof. Probably the best mouthfeel I've ever had on a whiskey. I'll be honest. So rich, so delectable. <laughs> I don't really know what else to say. I mean, I've reviewed this fully on another episode, but man, that is the best tasting whiskey, probably, I don't want to say best tasting whiskey I've ever had. The best tasting weeded bourbon, for sure, absolutely, hands down, I've ever had. Probably up there, one of the best bourbons I've ever had. So if you guys get your hands on a foolproof, try it out and let me know what you think. <laughs> um, but I know that's that's hard for me and it's hard for everyone else. So I think that does it for tonight. I did, I did a little overtime to make up for the, for the, delayed stream so i hope you guys have a wonderful night i like i said i'm not going to do a stream next week so i do have a produced video coming out probably this saturday i review the new red breast 14 year 14 year small batch um it's a completely new product and very few people have it so i i'll just say like i i really did have some thoughts <laughs> that's that's the most generic thing to say I had some very, very good things to say about that whiskey. So look for that one. If you're not subscribed, like I said, hit the subscribe button. It really does help me out. And thank you guys. Okay, Peter. Wait, hold on. I got to answer Peter's question. Better than William LaRue Weller. Have never had William LaRue Weller. That's my unicorn bottle. I have never seen it. I have never had the opportunity to try it. I'm just like, my mouth is watering just thinking about it. So... 
No, I have not had that. But if anyone wants to send me a sample, um, let me know. I'll send you my address. No, seriously, that's that's my bucket list whiskey. It's always been. I tried to get one this year. I did not get one. But um, Raphael, it's a so to answer your question. I would say 15, but it's different. It's, it's very, very different. So like I said, check out my review. I'm posting it in a couple of days. If you're not subscribed, um, subscribe below. I, I was really shocked by the flavor profile of it. I'll say that. So cheers to everyone. Hope you have a wonderful Christmas and happy new year. Um, I'll be live that week. I just won't be live before the end of 2019. So cheers to a wonderful new year and whatever you're drinking, I just hope you're enjoying it. And my whole goal with the channel is to help you drink good whiskey. So these are my favorite whiskeys. Oh, Brandon, don't tease me. Don't tease me. If you don't tease me. We'll, 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 we'll follow up, Brandon. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, have a great night and I will see you guys next year. Way to be cheesy. All right. Have a wonderful night. Talk to you guys later. Bye.